the only thing is that you won't be able to like yeah. move your yeah. arm like relative to this. Like mm -hmm. your arm Remember, this part tightens up. Remember, buddy? Don't be strapped it's in. It's going to be all done with your fingers, Danny. You're going to have to move them. Yeah. Remember, they told you you need to start strengthening your fingers. Well, how else do you think that we would be able to do it? Do you think of any other way that would be easier for you? Oh, it's going to be like pretty much like that. Right, right. Can you curl your fingers then? Not this one. Well, I have no you, were, you were doing that. There you go. There you go. Up and down. So you can do that. Well, that, yeah. well the That's only finger I don't have control of is pretty much this finger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our client, Daniel, had longitudinal deficiency of the bones in his right forearm, both the radius and the ulna. This limited him to having only two fingers at the end of a shortened arm, which stopped basically just after where his elbow would be. So what we wanted to design was something which would allow him to have a full-length arm, which would be able to flex at the elbow, uh, rotate at the wrist, and grab things that he's not able to grab right now with a little more force than he's able to use with the fingers he has. The first part of the device is the harness. The harness was rapid prototyped out of ABS plastic and includes a system of struts and windows which are linked together by straps which will go around the user's arm. This will allow the device to hang on the user's arm throughout regular ranges of motion. The upper arm casing was also rapid prototyped out of ABS plastic and housed the user interface, which is where he would use his two fingers to control the different motions of the device. There were three linear potentiometers placed in here. One would be used to control flexion and extension at the elbow. One would be used to control opening and closing of the hand. And one would be used to control the gear motor, which generates wrist rotation. After this, we have the elbow joint where you can see the Fergeli linear actuator which was used. When this linear actuator retracted, it would generate flexion at the elbow, and when it extended, it would generate extension at the elbow. After this, we have the forearm casing which housed the battery and the electrical components, including the printed circuit board designed in Eagle PCB. The electrical components would interpret the signal from the linear potentiometers of the user interface, and output a signal to whichever electrical or mechanical device was required to be used. This would allow us to have the flexion at the elbow, the opening and closing of the hand, and the rotation of the wrist. After this, we have the wrist and the hand subsystems. The wrist subsystem has a gear on the back of it which interfaces with the gear motor inside the forearm casing. When, when the gear motor rotates, the wrist of the device rotates as well. There are physical stops on the front of the wrist which prevent the device from over-rotating and tangling occurring inside of the forearm casing. Inside of the wrist, there is a linear actuator which is attached to a claw link at the base of the movable prong of the hand subsystem. When the linear actuator retracts, the movable prong is drawn in tight to the stationary prong, allowing the user to grasp various objects. When the linear actuator extends, the hand opens back up and the object is dropped. After working with Daniel for over 25 weeks, we feel that we have gotten a pretty good idea of what Daniel wanted out of the device, and we feel we have incorporated all of his wishes into this device, and we truly believe that he will enjoy wearing this and using it in day-to-day -day life, and that, on the whole, it will improve his quality of life.